Good afternoon, everybody. Flood waters are still raging across parts of our state, and the risk to life is rising with the angry waters. Yesterday, I urged you to stay off the roads in most parts of the state, particularly south of Highway 64 and east of Highway 7374. That warning still stands today as the threat of flooded roads keeps spreading. We're working very hard to find routes to places that need help, and we don't need people out on the highway blocking those routes. This storm has never been more dangerous than it is right now for areas from Fayetteville and Lumberton across the Sand Hills and southern Piedmont to our mountains. The Cape Fear, Lumber, Noose, Yadkin, and portions of the Rocky River and South Fork of the Catawba River are still rising and not expected to crest until later today or tomorrow. As this storm continues to churn through North Carolina, it has dumped nearly two feet or more of rain in many places. The strongest storm bands are dumping two to three inches of rain per hour. That's enough to cause flooding in areas that have never flooded before until now. The risk is growing as well in the mountains where rains could lead to dangerous landslides like earlier this year. Wherever you live in North Carolina, be alert for sudden flood flooding. Pay close attention to the weather warnings and be ready to head for safer ground if you're asked to evacuate. And that is going on now with some of our rivers. Never drive through flooded roads. Just a few inches of water can wash your car away. And that is already happening out there. This morning I flew with the Coast Guard to witness some of the damage that Florence has brought to eastern North Carolina. Coast Guard Vice Admiral Scott Bushman invited us, and we were joined by Secretary Jim Trogdon of the Department of Transportation, Secretary Eric Hooks, the Secretary of Crime Control and Public Safety, along with Brigadier General Todd Hunt of the North Carolina National Guard, and Albie Lewis, our Federal Coordinating Officer with FEMA. We were able to get into the air and see significant damage in eastern North Carolina. The weather prevented us from seeing everything because the storm is still with us. We were able to fly over Fayetteville and Lumberton, Hope Mills. We were able to see that the Cape Fear River water is well over its banks. And there is a lot of farmland underwater all over the southeastern part of the state. I'm concerned about the impact on crops and farms. We then headed over to Jacksonville and out over Emerald Isle and up the Crystal Coast. Weather prevented us from getting to Wilmington, but we were able to fly back up to the Neuse River toward New Bern and saw the devastating impacts there. This treacherous storm officially has now claimed 10 lives. We mourn their loss and our hearts go out to the victim's family. We are working now in doing everything we can to prevent more deaths. People can help us with that by using safety precautions and common sense. Swift water rescues are going on right now. More than 900 lives have been saved by first responders rescuing survivors from flood waters. We have about 15,000 people or more, that number's fluid, remaining in about 150 shelters across the state. Mass shelters are open in Winston-Salem and Chapel Hill, and additional shelters will be open if necessary. Across the state, around 700,000 people right now are without power. We appreciate the utility crews from North Carolina and beyond who are here to help restore power. 
But people need to understand that some areas are likely to be without power for a while. I know they are working as hard as they can. We're delivering food, water, and high water vehicles and other supplies and equipment to hard hit areas just as quickly as we can. Last night we requested that several more counties be added to the federal disaster declaration that we received Friday for eight of the counties. And we know we will be adding even more counties to that list in the coming days. I will say this to the people of North Carolina, eventually the skies will clear and the floodwaters will recede and when they do, we're ready to take on the challenge of rebuilding our communities. My promise to the people of North Carolina and to the towns, cities, farms, and businesses damaged by Florence is this. North Carolina is with you, and we are in it for the long haul. We have a strong team responding to this storm and preparing for its aftermath. I'm first going to recognize our Director of Emergency Management, Mike Spray Sprayberry, for a few remarks. Mike. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. The State Emergency Operations Center remains activated at a level one with all of our CERT partners on day seven of the Hurricane Florence operation. We're currently engaged in a large scale search and rescue operation in our coastal counties, and our logistics teams are pushing out commodities as requested. There's over 1,000 first responders performing wide area searches with 214 boats. We also have ongoing aviation search and rescue and as the weather improves, we'll be able to get more aviation out there doing some more search and rescue. We're also currently working with our outstanding volunteer partners from the American Red Cross, the North Carolina Baptist Men and Women, and also the Salvation Army to set up mass feeding kitchens. We anticipate setting up as many as 10 kitchens to meet the need of our disaster survivors. Kitchens that are either set up or in the process of being set up are located in Washington, New Bern, and Wilmington. Shelters remain a top priority and we are engaged in mass sheltering operations with approximately 15,000 shelter occupants. As the governor alluded to, it's a very, it's a, a number that it's, you have a hard time tracking as people come in and they come out based on the, on the, uh, the hazard. We're also working with our federal partners on developing temporary housing strategies as needed when uh, our shelter occupants uh, don't have a place to go back to. We want to make sure they have a, a temporary housing option. I think it's also important to note that all 911 centers are operational. When you call, you may be answered from a 911 center in another county, but responders will be dispatched to your county as normal. This is how the 911 center backup system works. As expected, we're continuing to experience widespread flooding and it's worsening in some locations. Current areas of concern for major flooding include Pollocksville, News River at Goldsboro, Pungo, Pungo River at Bellhaven, Lumber River at Lumberton, Cape Fear River near Kelly, Contentnia Creek at Hookerton, News River at Kinston, Northeast Cape Fear River at Chinkapin, Noose River near Goldsboro, Northeast Cape Fear River near Burgaw, Rocky River near Norwood, South Fork Catawba River at Lowell, Yadkin River at Elkin, and Yadkin River at Yadkin College. You'll note these locations are in the eastern, central, and western part of our state, and also you need to keep in mind that these locations are not all inclusive. Hurricane Florence, or now Tropical Depression Florence, is stationed right over North Carolina and continues to dump rain on us. We urge all of our residents to log in to our flood inundation mapping and alert network known as FIMAN at FIMAN.nc.gov. That's F-I-M-A-N.nc.gov. You'll see what roads and structures will be affected by flooding and you can sign up to be alerted by text and email when rivers begin to rise. As always, begin, always make sure that you follow the guidance of your local officials and stay in touch with your local media so that you can have good situational awareness of what's happening around you. Thank you so much for your support of the North Carolina State Emergency Response Team. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Mike, and thanks to the team at the Emergency Operations Center that are working around the clock. 
our road situation is constantly changing, dynamic, by the hour. Our Secretary of Transportation, Jim Trogdon, is going to give us the latest update. Thank you, Governor. Um, as of Friday, if you recall, we had 30 primary roads at noon uh, closed across the state. Yesterday at noon, that number grew to 60, and today it's 171. So conditions continue to worsen, and as you can see from our graph, the, the areas and events are occurring are spreading westward as predicted uh, by the meteorologist. Uh, overnight, we had two more sections of I-95 close, uh, one in Lumberton, which we anticipated, and one in Benson. And on I-40, we had two additional sections uh, flood, and that's at Brigal and Castle Hain. We have successfully uh, opened a route to New Bern and Moorhead City to serve our first responders and to primarily serve first responders and to move our utility repair vehicles into those areas because one of the things that we observed today in the flyover is the, the lack of power was obvious and one of the first things we have to do is support getting our power company vehicles in there to make those repairs. We also had a closure on US 74 in Columbus County. Uh, that's presented us with a challenge of right now we don't have a land access to Wilmington. We are working with the Department of Defense and the National Guard to see if we can't support our first responders in getting access through high water with high water vehicles. And we're also working other contingencies to support Wilmington on the, on the ocean side. Um, I will, I will tell you that our assessment is that we'll continue to see flash flooding moving west towards Charlotte. We're already seeing some reports of that with roads closing in around the Mecklenburg area. Uh, and we'll continue to make sure our routes stay open to support uh, commerce in that region. Uh, we ask all the motorists and citizens, same as yesterday, if you're driving, do not drive uh, east of Interstate 73, 74, or US 64 South. That is an area where it is extremely dangerous today. We'll continue to be uh, in the coming hours, uh, and we'll support the movements as necessary in the rest of the state. As weather moves into the mountains, be particularly uh, cognizant of rock slides and, and flash flooding there and mudslides, uh, because uh, that is one of the things that uh, that our folks in, at DOT are used to responding to, but they're very difficult to predict. So make sure you're very cautious in moving through areas that have been prone to, the, to that uh, in the past. That concludes my update. Thank you, Jim. We'll now have the commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol, Colonel Glenn McNeil, to give us an update. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. You know, I'd like to state a special thank you to the media. Thank you for getting out our public safety message. If we lose one life, that's one life too many that we've lost. So please heed the public safety messages that we are given. If you don't have to drive, please do not. And if you see standing water or running water across our roadways, please do not attempt to cross those. Over the last 24 hours, our Highway Patrol, our National Guard, our first responders have surged into the impacted areas to assist with the local response efforts. Roadways in the eastern and southern portions of our state are experiencing widespread flooding as rain continues to fall. These hazard driving conditions are expected to continue for several days as the rivers in the affected areas continue to rise. In coordination with our DOT partners, Major thoroughfares that include I-95, I-40, US-74, US-70 remain closed. Several secondary roadways around the affected areas are impassable due to standing water or downed trees. Overnight, our troopers responded to 48 collisions and 126 calls for service, which consisted of road closures and downed trees and also stranded motorists. While conditions in your area may be improving right now, we cannot stress the importance of not becoming complacent. Heed the public safety warnings that we're given here at these various press conferences. Residents who may feel like venturing out themselves could be involved in a flash flood scenario. 
which could potentially place them in harm's way, and also the first responders who are tasked with responding to save them. Please continue to monitor roadway conditions by visiting drivenc.gov, and this concludes my brief. Thank you, Governor. We'll now hear from Adjunct General Greg Lusk, North Carolina National Guard. Yep, thank you, sir. Of course, we always want to start out by just reminding ourselves of the uh, selfless individuals that comprise this entire emergency response uh, enterprise. Many of them are victims of this storm and that are out there serving the needs of others as their first priority right now. Many of them not knowing the condition of their families or homes. The governor, uh, Governor Cooper's pre-landfall decision to pre-position National Guard across the, uh, the state is going to prove itself to be a very prudent decision today. Well, uh, with things clearing in the east throughout the, uh, throughout the day and starting yesterday, you're going to see a lot of a larger influx of the North Carolina National Guardsmen that have been, uh, been pre-positioned over these last few days now moving into these areas. And that will, will transcend across the, uh, the state from east to west as the storm continues to, to migrate west. They'll get there just in time to, to plug in with the local incident commanders and be part of their team in order to speed that response, that, that response uh, network, if you will, uh, down at the local level. So we're going to be surging forward. Uh, again, just a actually tremendous and uh, responsible thing to do. There you have also the, the pre-requesting of, uh, of our active duty forces was also paramount. As we know, we have a lot of our, our Army uh, trucks and drivers that are out there on the roads today that are already participated in the teams and they are integrated down in the uh, southeastern part of the state. So just like it has been for the last 17 years, you know, the Army team, if you will, is, uh, is here, here to work as well, everybody. It's important to note that over these next couple of days, particularly as we're looking at the aircraft that are probably going to be out conducting a lot of search and rescue, wide area searches over a very large swath of North Carolina, there's going to be a lot of helicopters out in the air. And uh, it's going to be very paramount that, that we maintain drones, if anybody has them or owns them, if we could keep them grounded. Because if drones are flying, then we're perhaps not flying a rescue helicopter. So please help get that word out as well. The helicopters that are coming to us today, and there are many of them that are, that are on the ground and available to us now, 10 different states, 10 different National Guards have contributed to the effort. And I'm very happy to have with me here today Lieutenant, Ten, Lieutenant General Tim Cadby. He's the director of the Army National Guard. It's he and his staff that's helped coordinating the, uh, the state response to help us provide the depth and the capabilities that we need to respond to citizens in North Carolina. And he's here to make sure that that, that speed continues in the days yet to come. So thank you. In general, thank you to you and your troops. We know a number of uh, National Guard soldiers had not too long completed a mission in the Middle East. and They're now back on active duty. So we're grateful for that. Uh, we now have uh, North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein here to talk a bit about uh, protecting consumers in the aftermath. Thank you, Governor. I want to first address the folks who are living down east and struggling to deal with the consequences of this terrible natural disaster. Uh, the people of North Carolina are with you. The government of North Carolina is with you. And we want to do everything we possibly can help you get your lives back on track. For the first responders, the utility workers, the volunteers who are working in Eastern North Carolina today, helping out fellow North Carolinians, we are deeply grateful for the work and the help that you are providing. Uh, and Governor Cooper and everyone here at the Emergency Operations Center, I just want to thank you as a North Carolinian, because I know for the past week you all have been working nonstop to try to deal with the consequences of this, uh, and we are all very much appreciative. In many of our communities in the East, uh, local business operators, they're neighbors just like other neighbors, and they are doing everything in their power to serve their communities, to make sure that they're open, uh, stay open late, make sure that their goods and services are available for people in need. Uh, but unfortunately, there are some out there who will take advantage of a natural disaster to make a quick buck. When the governor declared the emergency, the, the state of emergency, that triggered our state's uh, price gouging law. So it is in effect uh, and we are actively enforcing it. We've received 500 complaints to date from people throughout Eastern North Carolina. The majority of complaints have to do with necessity like gas and water. Uh, we've seen some 
complaints about excessive hotel prices for people in the east who were moving and evacuating as they were urged to do. Uh, we've begun an investigation into some gas stations in eastern North Carolina. This law will remain in effect for 45 days unless the governor determines that it should be extended for a longer period of time. Uh, when in the days and weeks that follow, please, people in eastern North Carolina, keep your eyes open if you are seeing price gouging by retailers or by uh, construction companies or anyone that's out there providing a good or service, let my office know. Uh, if, you have util if you have internet, the best way is ncdoj.gov backslash disaster. Uh, if you don't and have a telephone line, you can call us toll free at 877-5-NO-SCAM. In the weeks to come, people are going to need to get their lives back in order. They're going to have to fix their homes. They're going to have to remove trees from their land. Be very careful who you do business with. When someone drives up to your home, you don't know who they are. Always better to deal with somebody from your community. Make sure that they are licensed. Make sure they have insurance. When you get uh, start a business relationship, get quotes from more than one uh, vendor so you can compare. Whatever you they promise you, make sure it's in writing. The work they're going to do, the time in which they're going to do it, the materials they're going to use, and do not pay all up front. You can run the risk of losing all your money if the person disappears. Pay for the work as it gets done. There are people in North Carolina, people across this country who haven't been affected, but whose hearts uh, are pulled by the images that they're seeing. And they want to help, and we welcome your help. But please, make sure the money you donate goes to actually provide that help rather than to line the pockets of some scam artists. Don't give to some charity that emails you or calls you because they have a good sounding name. Instead, make sure you give to established charities that you know will put that money to good use to help the people of North Carolina. There is the North Carolina Disaster Relief Fund that is done by the state of North Carolina. There are established organizations like the Food Bank of Eastern and Central North Carolina, the United Way of North Carolina, the North Carolina Community Foundation, and there are dozens of other important and effective charities. Just support those and not somebody who reaches out to you because you have no idea who they are. And then if you're in the market to buy a car in the coming weeks and months, just be wary about flood damaged cars. And that's something we can talk about down the road. Have uh, a, a licensed mechanic inspect your car to make sure it is what you hope that it is. Florence has brought hardship and despair all across the state. Let's make sure that that hardship isn't compounded by scam artists trying to take folks' money, and we at the Attorney General's office are here to make sure that doesn't happen. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Josh. And the State Disaster Relief Fund is at governor.nc.gov if you want to contribute. I'm also joined on stage by our Secretary of uh, Public Safety, uh, Eric Hooks, also, Admiral Scott Bushman of the Coast Guard. Uh, also, Alby Lewis, our FEMA partner. We're grateful for them. Uh, I'm also joined by Lee Williamson, who is our interpreter today with American Sign Language. And to tell people that uh, you can call 211 for non-emergency information. And for the deaf and hard of hearing, that number is 888-892-1162. We will take your questions. Governor, I'm Gary Robertson of AP. Uh, we talked about the farmland. We saw a lot of uh, farmland that was covered in water today. Uh, could, is there an update on uh, hog lagoons and whether they've overrun their banks or there's any concerns, um, uh, concrete concerns? So Commissioner Troxler let us know that they had drawn down the hog lagoons. Uh, they said that he, he said that the farms could take uh, up to 30 inches of rain. We are closely monitoring the hog lagoons with our uh, Department of Environmental Quality and Agriculture partners, and we haven't had any reports of issues at this time.
Yes, sir. So the, there's actually four of them, uh, one in Goldsboro, one in Clayton, one in High Point, and one in Charlotte. Uh, the one in Charlotte's opening today. Um, they're staffed with a mix of uh, federal and state employees. Um, the last I had been told, there was at least 170 patients, uh, but I think that number is growing as we've had some more evacuations. We can get a, a better, more up-to-date number for you. But uh, we're really proud of how those operations have been run. And uh, like I said, four uh, centers and four operational. Yes, sir. Anyone else who's on the Coast Guard flight? I wonder if you can speak a little to more to what you saw. I don't know if there were landmarks you recognized that other yep. people might recognize or just kind of an idea of how widespread this all seems to be. Yes. Uh, we saw the dam at Hope Mills that they had put in place. We saw Chinkapin that was pretty significantly flooded. We were able to see parts of Hornet County that had flooded. We flew over Lumberton. A lot of Lumberton was obstructed with clouds and rain that won't go away. Uh, we were able to go and, and fly over Fayetteville and it was stark to see the raging Cape Fear River and you knew it was rising and you could see these vulnerable communities that cause significant concern. We were able to fly over Jacksonville, Onslow County. We uh, saw significant flooding in Onslow County, particularly with, with farmland and flooding there in Jacksonville. We were able to fly over New Bern and you could see boats that had been washed up into the town significant debris because a lot of the uh, waters from the river had receded. There was still a lot of water in New Bern, but quite a bit of it had receded. Uh, we were not able to see Kenston and some of the other areas. The rain was just too significant and the ceiling was too low. But um, I, I do know that we've got a tall task ahead. And uh, I was going to recognize him to speak, and now is a good time. I want to recognize Admiral Scott Bushman of the, uh, the U.S. Coast Guard. We're, we're grateful for their help today. Admiral. Thank you, Governor. The uh, Coast Guard is part of a very, very broad federal response here, and we're supporting the state of North Carolina, the local officials, and FEMA. Um, we have been preparing this for over a week now, and now we're in the response phase. We've been flying since Friday. We pre-positioned our assets. We've been flying since Friday in some pretty extreme conditions. We had a number of helicopters out there flying yesterday, rescuing fo folks, rescued about 50 different people. As of this morning, we have nine helicopters in the air and dozens of shallow water boats out there assisting people. As the governor mentioned, there's more rain to come. Some of the rivers have not crested yet. So I just want to emphasize what the governor stated and the other officials up here stated, is that listen to your local emergency management officials. They know what they're doing. They have their best interests at heart. Stay sheltered until it's safe to do so. Don't venture out until it's safe to be out. And if you're in a stress situation, call 911. Thank you, Governor. Other questions? You know, right now we're thinking that there's going to be tens of thousands of homes that are, are damaged. And so our, you know, we're fluctuating in shelters, but that doesn't tell the whole story because a lot of people have evacuated and gone to family and friends, hotels, and so hard to get an exact number. So in the weeks to come, uh, we will set up uh, disaster recovery centers. Um, just this morning I had a conversation with the um, – our federal coordinating officer and our regional administrator about putting in for some of the temporary housing programs such as the transitional uh, sheltering assistance and other other types of programs that we can already get in the pipeline so that uh, when we need to we can go ahead and have them available to us. Lorna. 
think we had had an estimation of a total of somewhere between three quarters of a million to a million people that had evacuated certain areas. And it's hard to know exactly uh, that, that number, but that's what we think. And then we hope that there will be more than that because there's going to be mandatory evacuations around a number of these rivers that they need to rise as well. I yes. wonder if, if you could clarify the estimated number of deaths, I believe it was 10. ten. I've seen 14. Yes. Is that just in North Carolina that I'm hearing of? 10 North Carolina deaths officially related to the storm. However, there are others under investigation. I think we're going to have to look careful, carefully at decisions that we make regarding mitigation and buyouts of property. I know that uh, there are some places that have been flooded n numerous times that you just have to look at and say it's just not smart to build back. And that you have to do that on an individual basis as we go forward and we'll work with our federal partners to try to make sure that all funding is available, but we'll have hazard mitigation funding, uh, we'll have some state funding, we'll have community development block grant disaster relief funding, uh, and I'm sure that we'll have uh, housing finance money. One thing that this storm puts a spotlight on is the issue of affordable housing, which is there even without a storm. There's a, there's a concern about affordable housing all over the state in urban areas, but in particularly in the southeastern North Carolina where we are uh, seeing such significant devastation. So we're going to approach this rebuilding effort with an emphasis on affordable housing. I know the Department of Emergency Management, Mike and I have had significant conversations about that with our partners how we need to aim toward that goal. Other questions? Governor or, or Mike, could you give us an update on what you know about this, uh, uh, this coal ash landfill where I guess a globe had collapsed at Cabin Sutton? Can you give us any more information about that? We do know that there was a breach uh, in this lined coal ash on at Sutton and I know our Department of Environmental Quality is also is already uh, made inquiries with Duke I think Duke has reported it both to state and federal authorities and I think there's some issues now in getting actually getting to the area if that's the right much so that's where we are now. right I think it's just flooded all around and you can't get to it right now any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How about, how about, let's get the microphone. Yes, sir. Do you have, do you have a figure on the num number of facilities on or near Mainland Florida, particularly evacuated? And I guess you can still know the program. I know Dr. Cohen would have that number. Do you have it? No, I don't have it, sir. Can you desk it? We'll, we'll, we'll get that information to you. Dr. Cohen is not here right now, but uh, we'll get that to you. Other questions? All right, we'll let you know when the next briefing will be. Thank you.